Statin-induced necrotizing autoimmune myopathy is a rare side effect of a very commonly used medication, with an incidence of two cases per million per year. We had a case of 7-year-old male with one month history of weakness. He required support to get up from sitting posture and was not able to raise arm above his head, hence a proximal myopathy. His past medical history included depression, dyslipidemia, and a recently diagnosed coronal cell carcinoma of one. He did have a biopsy, but no treatment had been initiated. Medications include atrovastatin, fluoxetine, and aspirin. His lab worker was significant for a very elevated creatine kinase level. On presentation, he had a creatine kinase of 13,600. Here is a graph which shows his strength during the stay in the hospital. The yellow highlighted portions shows when he did receive a steroid and when it was initiated. He did get the steroid on the first day of admission. He got dexamethasone for a possible metastasis uh, lesion causing compression of the cord, which was ruled out with imaging. Thereafter, he did not receive any steroid and you can see an uptrend on the day 3, 4 and 5 peaking on day 6. We had a suspicion of panneoplastic myopathy and he was started on 60 mg of prednisol. Thereafter, the creatine kinase did get better and his weakness also improved. We did have extensive panel done for myositis extended panel and panneoplastic panel. These panel and panneoplastic help to differentiate between varieties of syndromes. The CV2 antibody helps in discriminating between chronic panneoplastic neurologic disorder and other inflammatory disorders, whereas the myositis extended panel helps with two groups of myositis specific antibodies and myositis associated antibodies, which would also include the connective tissue disorder and overlap syndromes. Since these were inconclusive, we had done a biopsy of the left quadricep muscles. They showed scattered ne regenerative necrotic muscle fibers with few inflammatory cells. This raising question of possible autoimmune cause or a toxic mediated cause. We did a HMG coeduductus antibody as it did not get better despite starting discontinuation and it came out to be significant of a range of 110 highly above the reference range. His clinical course thereafter is shown over here. He was continued to prednisone which was started for a possible panneoplastic panel. His weakness got better and he was tapered to 40 mg of prednisone. Follow up in three weeks, alas, did not have much uh, better result as we expected and he had persistent proximal muscle weakness with elevated creatine kinase level. Hence, we started him on immunosuppressant. He was started on methotrexate and his muscle weakness was markedly improved and he continues to do better. Coming to the discussion part, proximal myopathy causes uh, is broad and we should consider drugs, alcohol, thyroid, idiopathic inflammatory myopathy, malignancy, infection and sarcoidosis. There are few features which distinguishes CNAM from self-limited statin-induced myopathy. These are significant symmetrical person muscle weakness, markedly elevated creatine kinase, persistent symptom despite discontinuation of statin, and a relapse with steroid discontinuation and requirement of immunosuppression. Onset is highly variable. The sensitivity and specificity of HMG coeduductus is very high. 94 percent of sensitivity and 99.3 percent of specificity should be utilized with biopsy to establish a diagnosis. Biopsy predominantly includes necrotizing myopathy with very few inflammatory cells. These significant findings are indicative of toxic metabolic or humoral mediated autoimmune injury. Treatment includes discontinuation of cystatin indefinitely steroid and immunosuppressive medications like the methotrexate, azathioprine, and mycophenolate to be started. If these do not help, IVIG and rituxima may be considered. Hence, statin has been increasing and to know about an oncoming side effect of very commonly used drug is important. This case highlights the key features of identifying statin-induced necrotizing autoimmune biopathy and hopefully you, this will help you 
to conclude a diagnosis and help in management.